You're watching, old mates. Backyard Tech. 300 Oracle employees walk out in protest. Google to ship all UK user data to the US and Microsoft Windows 10. I think things are going to get a whole lot worse before they even slightly get better. From Backyard Tech, this is the weekly wrap up. Morning, everyone. The weekly wrap up is back for this week here at Backyard Tech. Three stories I want to give you my opinion on. Obviously, the one we covered just a couple of days ago, or yesterday, one of the two. Oracle and 300 of its employees walking out in protest over Larry Ellison's support for the Trump administration and vice versa. Just over 2% of the workforce. It's not much, uh, it's probably not even a drop in the ocean for uh, Oracle with about 130,000 employees on the books. We know in America that, and I guess the same thing could be said for here in Australia as well, companies are very close to political parties. And sometimes those leaders of those companies are very close to very senior members of a political persuasion. Ellison has always been a big supporter of Trump and he's a big supporter of the Republican Party. 300 employees, I don't think is much for him to even take notice of, let alone retribution could be well on the cards for those that did walk out, which is slightly shallow because I'm assuming the reason they did it was to prove that you know, there are some workers or wanted to give a point of view that some of the employees at Oracle do see the world in a different light, even if they don't follow Oracle's ethos. Um, it's a drop in the ocean. I don't think it would have achieved much other than giving them 15 minutes of fame. Um, Allison's not really going to care if he wants to support the Republican Party and President Trump. He's going to. You're not going to stop him. He's been at the helm of Oracle a long time, and I don't see that changing anytime soon unless something catastrophic happens. Um, 300 employees. Look, if they wanted to make a, a, make an impression as though they've got some sort of humility, I think you needed to do 10% of the workforce rather than about 2% of the workforce. Just saying. Google is shipping all UK user data over to the US, and this is massively problematic for the UK from my point of view. Basically, the protections on their data are actually far less than what they believe it to be. Now, their data is now falls under the US because they're not protected by the EU GDPR. They're not protected by Ofcom and the UK government's data privacy regulations because the data's not there. The data's in the US. And Google has that data. So if it's in the US, you poor UK people, you got another thing coming. It's like us Aussies. All our data's stored in China. We have no control over it. And we just have to deal with it. You know, the government doesn't want to upset China and we've done enough damage with coronavirus, but I'm sorry, guys, you're in a world of hurt because not only um, the report said that, you know, Google will abide by the UK data protection rules with that data. No, they won't. They'll find a loophole through it. Now, we know it'll be used by the security um arm of the US government, CIA, NSA, NGA, FBI, etc. So it casts a massive dragnet over the UK. Um, we know it will be used in trade negotiations. Often da user data is when you're talking about big business deals and advertising deals and political deals. It will be a mess. And I apologise, you guys are about to go through what us Aussies go through. And that's People watching your every move online. See, not only does the Australian government know what I'm up to, but they know all the time. And so does China. Because 
Chinese hackers have control of Australia's networks. Now, China will say they don't. They do. It's, it's, <laughs> you might as well bow down and scrape to it. It wouldn't surprise me in some cases that a lot of stuff is routed through a hacker's computer in China and they're searching through everything. <laughs> um, but for my UK viewers, you guys, your protection laws don't count because your data's not in the UK. It's in the US. So you have no control over it anymore. I don't see Google abiding by the UK Ofcom rules, let alone the EU's GDPR. We know that Google fought the EU tooth and nail over the GDPR. The UK government's just going to bend over. Boris Johnson is not going to upset his pal Donald Trump. So if Trump wants something from a UK data point of view, he'll get it. Because the data's there in the US. He doesn't actually technically need a warrant. We know that. The Pfizer court just hands them out. Um, so get used to it, unfortunately. Not much else I can say on that one. Now, um, Microsoft, the elephant in the room. Linux users are getting more and more, and more fodder, and quite in some cases, quite rightly so, more and more fodder against us Windows users. And that is due 99.9% .9 in part to the atrocious start to the year for Microsoft. Now, the last time, and someone can correct me, but the last time I believe there was a public apology from Microsoft was back in Windows 2000 when they broke it. And they actually came out and apologized for breaking it. They don't do that now. Microsoft needs to be careful. You start screwing up the PC industry and focusing more on mobile technology, you're going to lose a vast majority of users to Linux. Now, the Linux community does have a right to hang it on Windows users because we know with Linux... It doesn't break your hardware 99.9% .9 of the time. Sure, there's some compatibility issues and things don't work exactly the same, but generally speaking, it doesn't break your computer. And look, the hardcore Unix people out there say Unix never breaks anything. I'm not gonna say yay or nay to that, but generally speaking, Linux and Unix or Unix and Linux, or whatever, whichever way you want to look at it, doesn't break your computer. Windows does. And it's getting worse. Now, if this breaking of feature updates and security KB packs keeps occurring, and Microsoft focuses more on the tablets and the mobile phone stuff, they're going to lose users rapidly. Now, that may force other companies to start writing stuff for Linux, even if you've got to buy it at a reduced cost. But it's also going to give a leg up to Apple because Apple's going to be able to come out and market themselves and say, hey, guys, our systems never break, which isn't true. But if you look at Apple at the moment, at least they're stable. And Windows, nearly every second update to Microsoft Windows breaks something. It happened to me. I thought I'd, I'd avoided it. No, it broke. We've got user data being deleted. We've got updates, you know, uh, temporary uh, refresh systems not being deleted upon reboot. We've got the print spooler and rips getting busted. We've got audio controllers getting busted and Microsoft isn't, they're just pulling the updates. They're not actually offering up a fully-fledged public apology to say, hey, guys, sorry, we broke your computer. And yet they still want money from you. Um, yes, I get hung on a lot for using Windows, but I've tried to get WaveLab to work. I've tried to get Cubase to work in Wine, and it doesn't do it. And come hell or high water, I am not using freaking Audacity. Not when I've got a complete Steinberg package. 
Microsoft is killing themselves from the inside out. Getting rid of the testing environment was a disaster. Like I said, the the pattern is dead. Good, bad, good, good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, so on and so forth. Now, since Windows 7, it's been bad, 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 bad. It's not getting any better. I mean, I'm covering, I'm getting to the point now where I'm covering a Windows story, be it a breaking news story or a Tech News Today story, every couple of days. And it's getting to the point now where it's like, well, is it actually worth covering it? Because it's just the same thing. It's exactly the same. You know, a KB update breaks something. It's almost, it's almost pointless now. There is, there is almost no point covering a Windows story unless it's something catastrophic. Um, so I, I, I'm reconsidering covering Windows stories because there's no point me doing Tech News Today where every second Tech News Today video or every Tech News Today video features a Windows stuff up because it's every couple of days Microsoft is buggering it up. And having gotten rid of their testing and development people, and this is this stems back to when I got into the industry in the late 90s, you had software and hardware people. And it was up to the hardware people to tell the software people, hey, your stuff doesn't work on X, Y, and Z. Now Microsoft, and I might be drawing a long bow, but Microsoft now are, are working in that vein. It works in their area, so it should work on everyone's computer. Well, hang on, has everyone got the same setup as Microsoft? No, they do not. Let's face it, we all have different motherboards, we all have different hard drives, we all have different graphics cards, we all have different software, we all have different amounts of RAM, we all have different ways our computers are configured, we all use our computers very differently, day in, day out, 365, 66 days a year. So to sit there and say, for Microsoft, it worked on our system. They're doing that old 80s and 90s thing of, well, if it works on my system, it works everywhere. Well, no, it does not. The other thing that would hurt Microsoft too, and the Linux community would love this, especially the Red Hats, the Ubuntu's, the Debian's, the SUSEs, etc., would love this. If it gets to the point where Windows is so unreliable, business is forced to Linux. Now, the minute that happens, and look, it is highly likely, you can't have an operating system like Windows constantly breaking people's systems. Because once you go down that route, right, once you take that route to unstability or instability in an operating system, businesses are going to start sitting there questioning, well, I can't afford the downtime. You know, I can't afford to send in a, 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 an IT guy from a, from a company to fix my systems. That's downtime I can't afford. You know, if Windows breaks, you know, four or five workstations in a 25 workstation business, those employees are down. That's money lost to the owner time is money these days more so now than ever before so it's getting ugly and i think microsoft there was a comment this week on one of the videos about the possibility of windows 11 coming out and look i don't even think that'll happen and if it does happen it'll be rushed out. I think Microsoft are shooting themselves in the foot, personally speaking. There we are. My opinion on three stories from this week. Stick around. More coming up here at Backyard Tech today. We're going to uh, talk about what I'm going to do with the Acer AT350 coming up for you soon. In theory. You're watching Weekend Sundays here at the Backyard Tech channel. Thanks for watching. Cheers. This has been another presentation from Backyard Tech.